Hey, so thanks for joining me. So today what we're going to look at is uh, BSP, how to put it in and how to edit it since it's the foundation of every map that we build. We're going to take a little bit of a look at, certainly not an exhaustive look, but a little scratching the surface just to get us started. Now, first thing we want to do before we stampede into the editor, and uh, previous episode we looked at downloading that Epic Games launcher, so we're going to start in there today. And uh, what we want to do is we want to come up into this Learn tab. And what I would strongly recommend, if you haven't already done it, is this Content Examples. I would download that. And if we just pop it open, because I've already downloaded, this tab says Create Project, but yours will just say Download. So go ahead and download that. I would strongly recommend it. Not necessary, but I would strongly recommend it. So once we've done that, once we get into our game here, it's going to show up down here. Uh, usually we do have to get it out of, if we do download content, some of it we do have to access through the Epic Games Launcher, but this particular content example does reside here. So it's just in our projects folder. So if we double click that, it's going to open it up. And there's a few different advantages to downloading this thing. So this is what you get. And if we look at it, there's actually a lot of maps in here we can look at. And by the way, if you go down here to view options, you can scale these things. So that's kind of cool. But uh, my old eyes, I uh, needed big. So there it is there. And you can pop open each one of these maps. And it's kind of almost like a little tutorial and gives you basically an overview of, the, of the, all the features within the engine. So this is great and you can just spend an afternoon clicking on these, going in there and messing around. The one we want to look at today is this level design workflow. We're just going to pop that open real quick. And what this is, is basically a little, a little map, if you will, that shows some rooms and it shows how professional level designers iterate their projects. So if we go in here we can see and they have actually labeled it. So the first pass is going to be prototype pass and then so on and you know lighting pass, meshing pass and the like and then finally when you get to the uh, the final project here. But if we go in here we can see that this is the first iteration and all it is is B simple BSP work with a few textures on it just blocking out the space and you know this is probably going to be a statue later on now you don't want to fall out of here but you know basic brushes create columns and it kind of gives a sense of the space and we can kind of just rough in the lights and get a sense of the scale of the thing make sure the you know, player can get around okay you know the tempo of how long it takes them to get through the level etc. And that would be your first uh, iteration. So we can see the real importance of BSP. And just for the heck of it, if we go later on, this would be the next step for some of the static meshes. And by the way, if you do download this, now we have materials and static meshes that we can borrow for our own maps. And look at some of them. They're beautiful, like a statue and all the rest of it. But this would be the second iteration. Again, I'm not going to go through the detail, but I'm trying to stress here so we don't even have any of our particles or anything yet. But I'm just stressing that these are how the pros do it. Uh, you start off by just rough BSP work. So that's why it's important to get the BSP stuff down early. So why don't we have a quick look at, uh, well, let's go back in the ed editor here. And let's get started on this BSP work. So let's uh, go ahead and close this out. Let's open up, uh, let's see here, open project. And I, just for illustrative purposes, I just uh, this is what we're going to get a little bit later. But uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to look at, well, this. And I know it doesn't look very exciting. But uh, basically, we're just going to use a static mesh as an example. And then we're going to show four different ways of building this out of BSP. And this will kind of give us some real basics on working with BSP work. And of course, since every map starts that way, this is a logical place, I think, to start. And then by the end of the video, we'll have a look at how to build that. Now, if you know anything about the editor, you can see right away it's super easy to do. But if you're new, that looks pretty complicated. And, uh, you know, building that in like Doom 3 would be a little bit of work. But uh, with this, it's really simple. And there's another variation there that we'll, that we'll show. But probably by midpoint of this video, you'll know how to do this. But if not, at the end, we'll show. And then, uh, hey, there's uh, one little static mesh that we stole out of that content example. So definitely worthwhile to uh, load that. So let's get started by uh, getting into our project here. And I've created this map here. And it's very simple. Uh, I just made a default first person shooter map and I just put in one brush. And if we look down here into the details, it's just 4,000 by 4,000 by 1,000. And I just moved out the player character over here. So there's no point going into it. So, all right, to start our little discovery on BSP, first thing we're going to actually do is bring in a static mesh. And we're just going to use this as a template. Now, what we want to do is come down into our content browser here. 
And uh, just if we go to the root folder, our content folder, we want to look in here for starter content and in here architecture. And uh, Epic actually gives us a few static meshes to get us started, like a column and a wall. So we can we can build a basic house out of this stuff if we want. But we're going to focus on BSP. This is the one we want here. So let's just go ahead and delete these here. And this is the example we're going to use. And we're just going to replicate this guy. Uh, you know, using different methods of uh, of BSP. So let's get this guy positioned here. Whoops, a little not quite on the edge, so we don't fall off. And let's maximize that window. And if we bring it up here and hit our end key, it'll align it to the floor. Well, it didn't. We hit our delete key by accident. We want to hit our end key. There we go. And that's going to drop it to the floor. All right. So this is what we're going to use as kind of a template to build our BSP. One thing we can do is if we click it, left mouse button, and then we right mouse button, it brings up this flyout. And for visibility, I'm going to show only selected because if I have any overlapping brush, it's going to get a bit confusing. I like to work this way because I can just see what I'm working on at the moment. So, all right, so there's a static mesh. Now, the first thing I did was I figured out the dimensions of this. And uh, gee, how do you do that? Well, let's go into a sort of an orthographic view here. And here it is here. It actually ended up on grid lines, which is nice. I thought I'd have to adjust it, but it ended up on major grid lines. That's the way I like to work. So in order to measure this, they got a cool little tool in here, is if we middle mouse button and drag, we can sort of get this little measuring device. I just went around and measured all the different surfaces, and I just wrote it down on a piece of paper, just so I'd have some dimensions to start with. So let's get started. We want to replicate this. So the first way we're going to do it is just by simple brushwork. And just looking at this, how am I going to do this? Well, I could create two tall ones, a little middle one. I'm going to create two little ones here and then one big one. So that's how I'm just going to do it. I guess, I don't know if that's the right way, but that's a way. So I'm going to uh, go into my modes view and geometry, and I'm just going to click out a box. I'm going to left mouse button it, hold it down, drag it, and release. And there it is there. And let's go ahead and put that on a major grid line. And the last thing I want to do is just go into kind of a top view here and just kind of get it aligned just so it's right beside it. So let me just shift that over here real quick just to get it roughly positioned. Okay, there it is there. All right. Now we can go ahead and hit our R key and resize this, but I want exact dimensions because I measured it out, right? So I'm going to come down here and uh, let's see here. So thickness, uh, well, so. Our X is going to, if we look down here, our X is this way, so that's wide. So what I want to do, start off with here, is 140. And I want to go 30 thickness. That's going to be my default. That's going to be thickness of my wall. And then finally, tall-wise, we want to go 210, because that opening is 210 tall. So there's that brush there. And I just want to get it aligned with this other one. So let me just go to top view real quick here. Put it along this pane here. Well, I'll give or take. All right, let's go there. Okay, that looks pretty good. And the same height. There we are. All right, so let's maximize that. So a little brush there. So once we select a brush and we click our Alt key and we drag, we can clone it. So let's just drag that out and clone it. Let's do that again up here. All right, so there we have our pieces. And the only one we have to adjust is this one. So let's make sure it's selected. And the dimensions that we want, we just come down here to our details tab again, is we want to go 400 on the X. And then we want to go 190 tall. And we just want to leave the thickness to be 30 again. So 190, not 90, 190. There we go. All right. And let's get these guys aligned. So we'll go to the top view. And we'll just align this guy here. And we want to select this little, well, we want to, yeah, we want to select that one. Let's come down there. Let's select this little guy, move him over. Okay, and there we've replicated it. And top view, we're all aligned, yes, nicely. Okay, so there we have it there. Now, one last thing we can do is we can select them all. So just uh, left mouse button, hold down control, and then multiple click. Then we can hit Control G and that'll group all four of them together. So if we want to move it around, they'll all group together. So there we are. All right, so let's undo and put that down there. So that's one method of doing it. So let's look at another method. Let's try out another box. And uh, we're going to have to line and everything else, but that's okay. And we're just going to make this box 400 by 400. Oops, thickness wise, we want 30. And then 
along the Z, we want 400. So we're just going to do one brush there. Let's get it aligned with all our other friends here. So we'll just go here and here. Okay, so we can go back to this view here. Now, what we want to do is clone this. And we'll go to the top view. It's a little bit easier. So, okay, so we're going to select it, hold down Alt, drag out. There we go. And the only thing we're going to, well, we're going to change the dimensions of it. We want to make this a subtractive brush, which we'll see in a second. And that doorway is going to be, well, it's going to be tall wise, 210. Thickness wise, we're going to make it a little bit thicker just so our dimensions aren't so critical. So we can go 40. And then width wise, well, we blew this 210 tall and wide. We want to go 125. There we go. 125. Okay. And let's just push this through. And if we know anything about subtractive brushes, just literally they subtract the BSP that they're intersecting. So, uh, you know what? I'm going to make that a little bit thicker still. 60. There we go. Okay. And if we go down here, we want to change this brush type to subtractive. There we go. And there it creates our hole, and then we just have to bring it down to the floor. There we go. One more. Oh, there we go. All right. And if we actually show everything, so Control H, there it is there. And that's created basically out of two brushes. And we want to group these. So to select a subtractive brush, you usually have to nick the edge or select the edge. So there it is there. Control key click this guy here control G for group and then we've grouped those all together all right so that's the second way of doing it all right so the third way let's just hide everything except this guy so we're gonna select him select him left mouse button right mouse button brings up the flyout for visibility we're going to go show only selected and we're gonna get in here and we're gonna go to a front view so where's our front view? Here we are. Now, one really important thing is you have to do when we're using this particular edit tool. So you want to come up here and it says cycles to transform gizmo coordinate system between the world and local. Right now, if you see the little globe, that's world. We want to make sure that's on local. So that's the first thing we want to do. All right. So now what we want to do is come up to our modes and then click on this geometry editing. And we want to select that pen tool like so. Now this pen tool basically we just lay down vectors and it connects them and basically what we're doing is, is we're drawing a two-dimensional brush and then we're telling it how thick to extrude it if that makes any sense. We want to set up that extrusion right away. So right here in extrude depth once we have that uh, pen tool selected we want to put that to 30 since that's our wall thickness now. Now how this pen tool works is once you've got it selected this little square pops up on your cursor. I just want to make sure it's working and it is. Okay. So how that works is you put it over whatever coordinate you want and then you just hit the space bar and then it should leave a little red point and now we can see we can drag out another point. As long as we don't press space again our mouse works as usual so to zoom out we can just use our wheel and then to move we can uh, depress our right mouse button and drag and then we can just find our different coordinates. So I'm going to come up to here I'm just outlining that static mesh just uh, that static mesh is just going to be a guide so get to our next point we'll hit our space key again we'll hit our space key again and we're just drawing the outside of this uh, static mesh just to as a guide now it doesn't exactly line up I'm just gonna go simple and put it to there and up here to there to well let's say there and there and on our second last point we can just hit enter or we can just click this way but I'll just hit enter so Okay, there it is there. And basically, it's already drawn that brush. So let's get out of here. And then here we can see the brush if we go into this view real quick. So there it is there. That's the one brush. So we did that all with one brush. And we don't have to group it or anything like that. So now let's bring everything up and kind of align our new guy here. So we want to see everything. So show all actors, control H. And let's go into our top view and just align this real quick. So let's go here. And we'll put it beside our guy. So we're going to go look at one more way of drawing this using a slightly different method. So, okay, there it is there. And if we go into our 3D view, we've got our little, our little doorways all lined up. Okay, there we go. So let's look at one more way of doing this. 
And actually, we can do all this in this view here. So, all right. So what we're going to do is first off, we're going to, well, as always, drag in a little box right there. Now, let's start off with a certain size. So we're going to use the extrude tool here. And it's pretty self-explanatory. And we'll kind of see how it works. But basically, I know I have to start off with this little segment here. And so this brush, what we want is 140 wide. So we're going to come down here to our X, 140. Uh, we know that our thickness is always 30. So we'll go 30. And then we want to go 210 tall. Okay, so there it is there. And let's just drop that to the floor by hitting our end key. And we'll push it a little bit closer. Okay, give or take. There we are. All right, so how this extrusion work, how this extrusion tool works is it obviously has to be BSP. But what we want to do is we want to select a face and we can see it's selected because it turns yellow. Now when we come up here to our extrude tool and we select that, we can do it a couple of different ways. We can do it manually. And how this extrude works is that it comes up perpendicularly to the face you have selected. You can do it manually. You'll see what I mean by the way it extrudes is if we try to grab this gizmo and pull it, it doesn't do anything, nor does this one. But if we pull this one, we can manually extrude it. And it's created a segment here. And these segments are a concept is kind of important because, for example, like each time we extrude it, we get a segment. Let's say for whatever reason I want to extrude this face here or put a material just on this face, this is where the segmenting comes in handy. I'm not sure why you'd want to do this, but uh, just for illustrative purposes, and see, you can also extrude based on the, uh, looks like the sides and the vectors, which is kind of cool. But for now, let's just go with the sides. And, you know, if we wanted to, we could extract that as well. I don't know why you'd want to. But anyways, let's go back and concentrate on what we've done before. So I don't want to manually extrude. So we start off with our little brush, select this face, and I'm going to extrude it based on a value just because it's more precise. So let's select the side, hit extrude. And we want to come up here 190 and just one segment. So let's go 190 and hit apply. And it's going to create that extrusion. I think you see what we're getting at. Now that we've created this extrusion, we can click this face. And then we can extrude that 125 and hit apply. And we're going to extrude this face again because we want the surface to come down. So you see what I'm getting at. So we've got this face selected and we want to come out 140, apply. And then now you can see what we're getting at. We come down here, extrude this guy. We want to come down 210 and apply and there we go and it ends up being a single brush as well so that's another way we could do it and this extrusion tool is kind of handy like for example you know if we uh, well let's see here let's bring in a uh, another box here geometry and let's say this is a building front uh, so let's just go the thickness here real quick let's go 30 and I don't know 400 by 400 and let's say you're making a building. Yeah, let's just drop that to the floor. Okay, whoops. So select the face. So let's say we're doing the front of a building. Yeah, we could select this face here if we can actually select it. Okay, let's go up into our moon. There we go. And let's say I wanted to come up a little bit here because I'm going to create, say, a... Um, you know, a little, little, little trim detail here, and I did it a single segment. What happened there? Extrude, extrude, there we go. Okay, so length, we want, well, manual. And let's say we wanted to create a little, you know, trim detail here. So there we have it there, right? And you can texture these different, these different faces differently, so you get a little trim fix, fixture, so. Now that is by far not all of the edit tools, but that's some of the major ones and that'll certainly get you going to building your basic BSP. So, okay, so I promised how to do those staircases. Uh, by now you've probably figured it out. So we're gonna go up to here to modes and we've got geometry and we have these stairs. So we can just slap in these stairs. There it is there. And we're gonna ro rotate them. So we're gonna press our E key and then we're just gonna come here to 180. There we go. And let's position it so it's just touching the floor. So we'll come down. 
And then if we select that brush, which is selected already, and we come down here and we go to Brush Type Subtractive, and just that simple, we have our staircase. Okay, and then we can also do that obviously with this curved stair, so we can bring that in. Hit our E key, we can go ahead and rotate that 180 degrees. And it's already aligned with the floor, so it's already selected. So let's just come down here and go to subtractive, and there's our descending stairs. And if we go in here, we can kind of mess around with that. So, so there it is, basic BSP work. Now we're not going to uh, do any more than that today, but I think that gives you some basics and certainly gets you started on your BSP.